uh, what's been the biggest thing that you've been working on in the off season? Where do you think you're, you're going to improve the most? Um, I think just kind of keeping my ball flight consistent. Um, freshman year, I had a pretty good ball flight. It was pretty straight. It didn't have a lot of movement on it. And I think that kind of was why it led to a lot of success on some kicks that were longer because the longer you can keep the ball straight. Um, I mean, obviously the kicks are going to fly straight off. So you go in the uprights. Um, and also to continue on that kind of a lot of NFL kickers, that's what separates a lot of guys is, I mean, you could be a good college kicker and kind of there'll be some variation in your ball flight as long as it goes in. But those NFL guys keep that ball straight for such a long time. And I think that's what I'm really trying to achieve is just keeping that ball flight straight. So. Like a lot of times last year, Arkansas found themselves in, you know, fourth and short mm -hmm. and inside the 20 and stuff and, and opted to go for it a lot instead of instead of kick. You only had 16 kicks last year. Is that something you'd like to see increase, obviously? I mean, obviously – um more attempts the better I, I'm, I'm obviously leaning toward that but um I think the decisions to go for it on fourth down obviously coach Fountain kind of mentioned that a little bit was um what was best for our team at the time trying to get some momentum going and we had some good opportunities um and some games to kind of take some momentum away from the other team by going for it so I could see why we went for them and um kind of whatever coach Pittman or our OC kind of goes with them I'm backing them 100 percent because I want our team to succeed Cam, I think you're like 80 something. I, I'm not smart enough. No, I think 30 went out of 40. I'm too dumb to know what that percentage <laughs> is, but it's pretty good. But but uh, Scott was saying, boy, you'd love to hit 90. Mm -hmm. You know, 80 is really good, but 90 is mm -hmm. better. Uh, is that a goal you talk about, or do you think that's realistic? Yeah. So I always write notes to myself for goals um, on the whiteboard in my room, and 90% is on that. Um, obviously, to be a league guy, to be um, put up for the Lugros Award, you want to. You want to be at that 90% because usually most guys that aren't 90% aren't going to be able to achieve that award. So that's definitely a goal of mine. Mainly could stay consistent inside 40 is another big goal of mine. I've, I've had a pretty good, pretty good outcome with kicks inside 40. I think I missed one. It was my freshman year at Georgia inside of 40. Um, so I want to continue that, obviously. And obviously um, continue making those kicks for 50 plus. I was two for three last year um, with one miss being against South Carolina from 50 plus. So I really like that and um, just want to keep progressing, kind of getting that percentage higher and higher each year. So. 90% is definitely the goal. Hey, Eli, what, what was last year like for you? Because you know, whether you're a quarterback or a deep snapper, I imagine that high school to SEC had an easy transition. What, what was it like for you? And what, what was your finger injury exactly? And I hope it's – I assume it's feeling okay now. Yeah, so, um, yeah, as you can probably imagine, the first few snaps here in the stadium and all that was pretty nerve-wracking. It's a lot faster paced in high school, and it kind of caught me off guard. But um, after the first couple ones, it was kind of just like riding a bike. It was all the same. Same thing as like if you're snapping in the backyard. Um, with the injury, um, yeah, it was it was really disappointing. Um, but I did have confidence in the other snappers to help to help our team win, and they did a great job. And coming back, my finger feels great, and I'm really excited for this season. Is it a broken finger? Or which, or which uh, yeah, I did. I broke my right index finger, yeah. They step on there or something? Or what? Well, what happened was I snapped on a field goal or a PAT. I can't remember what it was. And the dude came down on me, and I put my hand up, and it just came backwards. And there's not much you can do about that. Come off the field, finger. I think my finger's broken. It all popped out of the bone. It was funny. It was funny? No, not funny. But he came off the field, his eyes were just in shock. And me and Max look at each other like, what the heck? Well, originally they thought it was, like, dislocated. So they're sitting back there pulling on it. I'm like, you know, I don't think that's doing a whole lot. And then finally they said, let's go get an x-ray. And I was like, all right. Let's and, and Cam, work, work with Eli, what, what what do you think of him as a snapper? And then Max is your holder now. Mm -hmm. How's that going with Max? It's going good. Um, it's good that I know that both the guys I'm working with every day are – trying to achieve elite level obviously max's brothers at uh cincinnati and he wants to be better than him every day at holding punting you know just going toward his craft so i know he wants to be an elite level um just competing with i mean obviously guys on our team the other punters for the spot and the other guys for the holding spot and um i just like that they're taking their craft to a serious level because at some places you know especially just kind of overlooked you kind of just go do what you want to do and there'll be guys that kind of fall into that okay i'm good being average but um, both the guys here, especially um, Eli and Max, really take their craft to a different level. I knew Eli was pretty high ranked coming in out of high school, so I knew he was going to, you know, try to be an elite level. And there's a lot of pressure um, going in for guys that are on scholarship, especially specialists, um, to kind of perform. And Eli rose to that level, and he's he's an elite snapper. Eli, there's a lot of, uh, you know, positive energy within the program right now. I think coaches, players are kind of pointing to the offseason work with, you know, Coach Souders and just a different – kind of emphasis on that from your perspective you know what's maybe 
the the biggest difference where you guys are right now to to maybe where you were last year and uh you know can you point to anything in particular that's kind of led to this kind of the, the positivity right now within the group um i think it's just how close we've all gotten i think the um the uh just how close we've gotten with the room the room is a lot closer we all hang out out, out of football which i think is also helping within football it's not individuals who are just like you know trying to do better for themselves or I want to I want to snap good today and I want you to do bad so I'm higher than you we're all helping each other out and I think it's the same thing with the locker room which is the whole team I think we're all working together we're all having a good time in the locker room we're all just closer together so I think that's helping on the field as well and uh Cam just wondering if you've got any you know new plans with your kind of relationship with the the Down syndrome connection Northwest Arkansas this year yeah I think I'm gonna bump it up I'm thinking fifty dollars a cake this year is what I really want to aim for um I think it was 10 freshman year, 20 last year. I think I'm above it up to 50 this year. But we're still kind of continuing that relationship. I think I'm going to get with them one more time. Um, they do a, what is it, first swing or what is it, first tee? I think that's a kind of a popular thing in Northwest Arkansas. Um, so I think I'm going to partner with them a little bit and kind of go out there and go to Top Golf and swing some around with them before the season starts. So that would be a pretty cool little event we'll get to go to as well. Now that you said 50, you can't go back into public, <laughs> public record. I'm, I'm a man of my word. I'll do it. Eli, uh, what sold you on deciding to come to Arkansas? Um, like Cam said, like just getting a scholarship uh, meant a lot to me. Um, it's it's really rare, I think, for long snappers out of high school, especially with that COVID and all that going on. It was really tough to get that opportunity. So when I got it, I took it. And at first, it was a little a little scary because it was like you said, I was like just right on the spot. Um, and I took it. And um, but then I'm like now I, I realize it's the best opportunity. I'm really glad I took that. So he remembers like where which which ones his fifty yard field goals were against and all that. You had two tackles that coach is very proud of. Who were the two tackles against? Cincinnati and BYU. Okay. Um, and then just what is that like on the sideline when when you're the man who gets to tackle? What is that like? When... I don't know. I think um Cincinnati was the first game of the season and I made the tackle and I didn't really like kind of comprehend what happened. Like I got off the sideline and they're telling me, dude, like the last snapper, I don't even think he got one last year. Like this is the first game. I was just coming back from a high school game, like where I played both ways. So it was kind of just normal to me. And then when it kind of sunk in, I was like, yeah, this is pretty cool. I was really kind of got to sit in that. That was awesome. Eli, it's probably in your bio, but what, what positions did you play in high school on the offense and defense? Um, I played tight end and defensive end. They switched me to like outside linebacker. They, I, I was kind of all over the place. I graduated with 60 people. So our football team was pretty much whoever could do whatever was doing it. So. I was specialist. You guys, it can be a lonely job, you know, like if you have a bad bad miss a kick. You know, we know Max had some real good punts last year, but but struggled with consistency. How do you think he's doing and what's your all's thought on how you know Scott was saying you know, a freshman year can be tough on guys and he he expects him to take a big jump this year. Yeah. Um I think people gotta realize at some point, um Max was a guy coming I don't know how many thousand miles away from a totally different country, never stepped foot on a fo real football field before. And all he had done was prior punting with uh, a thing called Pro Kick Australia, which they do a great job preparing their punters and kind of guys transitioning from Australian rules football over to America. But I think guys got to kind of realize that sometimes because he had never played a football game in his life. He obviously punted really well last fall camp and deserved a start. And I think um, kind of getting that feel of what college football is like under his belt with um, Reed kind of taking over midseason kind of helped his confidence a little bit and he punted well in the bowl game had some good punts then but I think it's just he's growing his consistency growing his comfortability getting more confident um throughout this past spring and fall camp and he's looking really good he's in a better mindset than he was last year as far as confidence goes which is really good and um I think honestly holding has kind of uh, boosted his confidence a little bit as well uh, we were talking after the bowl game after we beat Kansas he was like man that holding like holding on the field just kind of being on a college football field feeling that little bit of pressure gives him confidence when he's going out there and um I'm sure Eli snaps. Eli's been snapping really well so far and kind of getting it right on his hip. And I think that's probably given Max a little bit of confidence too. But I don't know. Yeah, I think Max for sure, his confidence has grown. Um, he's just been stacking good days on good days. And I think also with that experience of just, um, you know, being on the field and getting that last season, I think coming into this one, he kind of get that mindset like, you know, it is no different than practice. And, and he'll be able to just go out and swing his leg the same as he would any other day. You know, Eli, um, you're from Wisconsin, Brett Good. You probably know Brett. He was a great Packer. I think he's I think he's in Fort Smith, back in Fort Smith now. You know Brett at all? Do you guys talk? And if so, what's what's that been like? 
Um, I haven't been able to really get any work with him, but I did meet him at a camp and I've met him a couple of times at the facility and he's a really nice guy. And it's always his Super Bowl ring always catches my eye, especially being he played for the Packers, my favorite team, you know. So um yeah, man, he's for sure like he's he's there. He's done exactly what I my goal is to do is to play for the Packers and play, get to have a long career. So it's really cool. I guess Max didn't hold to the Liberty Bowl and you obviously missed that because you were hurt. So this Western Carolina game. Assuming it's you three guys together, which I think will be, will be the first time you all have actually done it in a game. How do you anticipate that going and moving forward? I think it's going to go great. I think um, just even operations today, it's all just been super mm-hmm. smooth. It's it's almost – I feel like it's been as smooth as it's ever been, honestly, and it just feels really confident with me. Okay, well, do you have a thought on that? And then also that – I wanted to ask you, that drill you guys do in practice where you put the, the – mm-hmm. or not the, the, the holder and – you try to hit. I think you're trying to hit the goalpost mm-hmm. from the side. Um, who's that? Whose drill is that? Just what do you think about that drill? Yeah, um, kind of going back to uh, the operation first with Eli and Max. I think honestly, kind of the first part of camp, for the past two fall camps I've had before this, um, kind of the first couple of days are kind of like, okay, well, we got to kind of get our timing down. And it usually takes about, I mean, I'd say it takes about a week, week and a half to really start feeling your timing, even with guys you worked with during the summer. Just because you're going to have to deal with live pressure and you don't deal with live pressure during summer reps, um, you're kicking off sticks and you're kicking off no rush. So I think that first week and a half is kind of non-existent because we've already, I mean, we're kind of already got our rhythm down. We're feeling really good. And Eli's giving me laces out. Max putting it on the spot where he needs to with a good tilt. So I think it's rolling better than it has even my past two years being here. So that's been good. But that drill, um, a lot of kickers kind of do that drill. I think it probably originated from an NFL guy, but who I got it from, Robbie Gold, kicker for 49ers, he's a free agent now, I think. But he kind of did that drill, and I saw it on a uh, Instagram clip. And I think I saw Jake Moody, he signed to the 49ers. That was kind of ironic. He signed to the 49ers when Robbie Gold got waived. Um, but he does that drill a lot, too. And so those two guys are, I mean, obviously really great kickers. Jake won the Louis Rosa two years ago with Michigan. And Robbie's, I mean, obviously a NFL veteran for I don't know how many years now. So seeing those guys kind of do that drill is kind of a no-brainer to kind of work on my accuracy and keeping that ball straight, hopefully hitting that up right from there. So I hit it at least twice early. Um, yeah, just trying to work on keeping that ball straight. Kind of like I talked with Trey, just kind of keeping that ball straight, keeping my consistency with that ball flight. I saw a laugh and a evil uh, smile, I think, when uh, Eli mentioned the Packers. Is, are you a Packers hater? Or is nah, it just I'm not, about not that? a Packers fan, I'll tell you that much. Not a Packers fan. Cowboys. 